We are here at Centerville High School, Jared Bergstrom from Miami Valley Communications Council, and we're gonna dive into the Centerville Elks Division I State Championship season from last year, and we're gonna preview their season this year on what they hope is a back-to-back -back state championship. And we're gonna talk some basketball with the defending state Division I State Championship Centerville Elks. Gabe, first off, you guys had an immaculate season last year. Just go ahead and give us your final thoughts about what it was. Um, I mean, we set, we set a goal at the beginning of the season to attack every opportunity with purpose, and I think um, us winning the state championship was just a fulfillment of that goal. Um, you know, it could have it went either way, and um, I think we would have not felt the same way, but um, I think we would have felt that we completed our goal of the season. Um, it just happened to lead us to a state championship that year. All right, and through the regular season, you guys had two stretches where you played five games in about 10 days. So what, how do you mentally and physically prepare for that? Um, I mean, we always talk about mental toughness, and it's just kind of who we are. I mean, like, we're up every morning to work out before school, so it's just kind of something that's, like, instilled in us. We're not going to complain. We're just going to get the job done. All right, and now starting to talk about the playoff run you guys had. You guys played the most games to get to the state in eight games. Action. You guys didn't really have a challenge yeah, until Mason. So go ahead and Council. Mason, how did that game, game start kind of prepare you for the toughness out of the Cincinnati area? Um, Mason's a really good team. I mean, they're really well coached. And I mean, they, you know, they're going to slow down and they're going to run their, their sets on offense. And, you know, it was really hard. We had a couple days of practice where we just kept screwing, the, screwing up how we were going to guard it. But, um, you know, our, our gold squad last year was really big for us, and they were, they were running the plays almost better than Mason when we got to the game. So um, that really helped us and got us prepared for it. And then you guys played Elder next. Elder, you started off slow, and it was a, they were up at the half. But how did you guys change in, in the locker room that talk, come back out in the second half and take advantage? Um, I think it was just a shift in mentality. Um, you know, we weren't shooting or playing um, our best, but I think that mentality switch at halftime just kind of set us in more of an aggressive mode and kind of, <laughs> while in the first half we were much more passive and they were kind of calling the shots, while in the second half, you know, like we changed, we pressured them and like ended up winning. All right, then you guys played Moeller after that. You guys had lost to him previous in the year down in Moeller. So when you guys prepare for this one, I mean, Moeller's always continuously been the best team in the state. Did you feel going into this game, if you beat them, it was easier from there on out? Um, yeah, I mean, not necessarily easier because, you know, at that point, anybody can win it. Um, once, you get, once you get into the Final Four and stuff like that, like any of those teams could win it. It's just who is playing well at that right time. And um, preparing for Moeller, I mean, we were just, we were working as hard as we could, preparing the best we could, and we were going to surrender the outcome. You know, we were... We went, the, we went as hard as we could in practice. We prepared as best we could. And, um, you know, if that, if that helped us win um, or if we lost, we knew we gave it all we got and, like, we weren't going out without a fight. All right, now after you guys beat Moeller, that was the furthest you guys have made it into the state playoffs. What, what did that feel like you mean in that step towards the state championship? Um, I mean, it was really, it was really fun and um, really refreshing to kind of feel that work pay off. You know, we haven't beat Moeller in a really long time, so um, it just kind of felt good to beat them. And um, but then after that, we, you know, we celebrated a little bit. But then our focus shifted to like the job's not finished. You know, like. We need to keep working, keep progressing, keep getting better um, to be able to try to win this thing because we're not we're not just going for the final four. And then you guys played Menor in the state semifinal game. You guys held them under 50 points. They come in averaging almost 70 points a game. You guys' offense was spectacular all year, but it seemed like you guys rode your defense, not giving up more than 50 points in any of your playoff game. Yeah, I think that just all ties back into our mentality. Um, you know, they, they were undefeated the whole season before that. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people from um, around where they're from, you know, were saying that they were going to kill us. And that just kind of sparked a flame with us. And, like, we were fired up to play them and guard them. You know, we were one of the – we know that they were one of the most explosive offensive teams. Um, so. You know, it was really, it was really good to see us holding that low. And you, you got into foul trouble in that game late. How did that affect you playing into the into the third quarter, into the fourth? Um, yeah, I mean, I was stupid about fouling and stuff, but uh, I think 
it just allowed Kyle to come in and like play his game and he really really did a great job and um, you know like held the game together for us while I was out um, so I mean that just goes to credit like our our team and like it's everybody not just one person you know we all have to work together and that's just a instance where some like he had to step up and that he did all right now you guys win that game you play for the state championship the next day do you really have time to celebrate that because you got to get prepared for the next game that next night um i mean we celebrated a little bit but you know still job wasn't finished so like after that game we came back here um put on the the other semifinal game to watch westerville and um you know just fully shift our focus to trying to win the game tomorrow all right now it's you're on your bus on the bus to the state championship what is going through your mind um i mean i in my mind i was, i just wanted to win extremely bad for the seniors um like they had surrendered everything for the season um like a lot of them didn't get to play at all and uh, i feel like i owed it to those guys to like try to win and do my best and i felt like all throughout the postseason like that was what i was working for i, I was working for like those seniors that came before me and like you know i think that pushed pushed us and pushed me to a whole entire another level because you know we we're we we're working for somebody else not not ourselves all right and then the final possession of the state championship there's like 1.8 seconds left on the clock and they have the ball to inbound under their basket and coach calls a timeout right before they inbound it what is going through in that final timeout before um I mean, we we talked about like what we were gonna do, and then um, my dad kind of like put his hand up and said, "This is just another opportunity to attack." So it just all ties back into our goal. Um, you know, like we didn't know if we were gonna be there at the beginning of the season, um, but that goal had taken us all the way throughout through the ups and downs, and like we were gonna finish attacking that opportunity with purpose. And then finally, when you when you see the ball fall out of the rim and they didn't make the basket, we saw the emotion on the court, but what was going through your mind as that happened? Um, I mean, it just felt like that work had paid off and like, you know, the, the refreshment and like kind of the relaxation of like getting the job done um, for the seniors and for the guys that I work so hard with like every day. I mean, it just, it was amazing. It's one of the best feelings I've ever felt. You talked about relaxation, but you were you were in the gym the next morning at six o'clock in the morning after the state championship. Yeah, I mean, it's a good accomplishment, but at the end of the day, like, it's just trying to get better. So like me and Tom were in there like working out. It's an opportunity to get better, an opportunity to attack. Like, we're gonna keep doing it. All right, now moving into this season, you guys, a lot of games against out-of-state opponents, but you've opened up against Menor to start the regular season. What? How do you go back into attacking that? I mean, they're both teams are two different teams, but they both you, they want a revenge. But how are you going to stop them? Um, I mean, we're just going to focus on ourselves. Um, I mean, we'll obviously game plan for them, but at the end of the day, we're going to focus on ourselves. That's one thing we did in the in the playoffs last year. I mean, we were just. Like, like tournament bracket, we had us, and then who cares? Like, we were going to focus on ourselves. We were trying to do the best we could because that's all you can control. And then finally, what what goals do you have for yourself this year? I mean, just win for my guys. I mean, these seniors, I've been, I've been with them, like, ever since I started playing basketball, really. So, like, you know, I just want to win for them, and we're going to not seek comfort the whole season. So you guys have, do you feel like you guys have a big target on your back as the defending state champ? Yeah, I would say teams probably want to beat us, but we, we're ready for it. We want them. All right, good luck this year. Thank you. All right, now we're going to talk with Tom House. Tom, kind of going to go over the same questions we did with Gabe. Um, first off, I mean, you guys are defending state champs. What does that mean? Uh, it means a lot to us. I think last year we kind of uh, put a goal to be as best as we could as a team, and so just playing for playing for our seniors that have worked hard for four years, and and just paid off at the end of the year. And you come out, you you led G Walk in three point shooting last year, and how do you hope does that going to carry over again to this year? Um, it might, it might not. It doesn't really matter for me. I think the biggest thing is just doing my role as best I can, so we can win games. 
And so if that means I score more or less, it doesn't really matter for us. Okay, do you think, you committed to Florida State earlier this year, do you think that is now a, not necessarily a mind blocker, but out of your, out of the way so you can focus on your senior season? Yeah, re recruitment was fun, but I'm definitely happy that, that I was able to find the right spot for myself so, so I can focus on you know, winning games for, for my teammates and, and making sure we have another successful season. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump into the playoff run you guys had again. We'll go ahead and start with the elder game. You got hurt early in that game. You took a tumble, but you still made three huge threes in that second half. What was going through your mind when you were laying on the court first when you got hurt? Um, just a lot of pain. I, I was kind of scared. I didn't know how severe it was, and then I tried to play through it, and, and, and it was a little rough the first half. But um, I just wanted to get back out there as much as I could, even if it was just quick spurts. So um, I was lucky my trainer helped me a lot at halftime, was able to get me back out there. And then in the Moeller game, again, I mean, Moeller is one of the toughest teams in the state. What was going through your mind before you guys went into that game? Um, we had lost them a few times. I have personally playing, playing um, you know, up through since I was a freshman. So, um, you know, it was good to just, we had some time to prepare for them um, and game plan for them. We knew, we knew we could beat them if we played our game. So, um, you know, it was, it was another game for us, but it was definitely a big opponent. Yeah, it went back and forth, and you hit that big three. That was almost like it looked like on TV, almost 12 feet behind the three-point line. What was going through your mind, a, when you first got the ball, and then when you let it go? Uh, well, I think the big thing for us is we're comfortable with whoever we had on the floor taking that shot, and I know my teammates trusted me to take that shot. So um, when when Rich skipped it and Gabe passed it to me, I knew that. You know, they wanted me to take a big shot, and you know, I've, I've worked on I've worked on that stuff. I worked on like late game situations, so um, you know, I wasn't really thinking too much of, of the shot. I was just I got open and, and took it. And then quickly, how hard is it to transition back to get on defense that quick? Because neither team had a timeout to call, and there was like three seconds left in the game. Um, I mean, right after we made it, I, I just kind of sprinted back, but Gabe had a heads up play to foul him because we had a foul to give, uh, so they weren't coming downhill with with full steam, so he, he made a great decision there, and, and we got a foul, and then we're able to set up set up on the side. All right, now you guys win that game. You move on to Mentor, two wins away from winning state. You guys, was an accomplishment you guys wanted at the beginning of the year. What what did it feel like that you were just two wins away from that? Um, it was just two more games to, you know, to get ready for, two more games to give the seniors. Um, so, you know, it, it was meant a lot to us, but um, we, we didn't try to overcomplicate it. It was just two games that we were going to prepare for, one game at a time. And then you guys beat Mentor, move on. What is going through your mind on the bus ride to UD to win the state championship? Um, I, I, I was just trying to keep in the same mindset that I had the whole year and not try to put too much pressure on, on it being the state championship game. Um, I knew it was going to be a lot of fun, but um, I was just kind of relaxed trying to talk to my teammates and, and some of the older seniors trying to take in the last bus ride we had with those guys. And then you guys win the state. What, what was going through your mind? Because you were not on the court when mm -hmm. the final play was off. You were on the bench, but we saw in a couple of videos that you came running. You were one of the first ones off the bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, I'm off for, for the defensive part, and I knew those guys were going to take care of it. So. I trusted them, and, and we, we kind of forced them to take the shot that we wanted them to take, like a tough contested shot. So, um, you know, it just felt it felt great for, for me and, and the work that I've put in, but the biggest thing was just how long before even my team was there that they've put in work. So, you know, it was just a big payoff for our school and our, our culture here at Centerville. Now, again, you and Gabe were in the gym by 6 o'clock the next morning. Did you even have time to enjoy the win? Yeah, I didn't sleep, so the whole night I was just um, thinking about it. I couldn't sleep, so I said, you know what, I'm just going to get back in the gym. That's what got us here. So so looking at the schedule this year, Coach Cups looked like he scheduled a couple harder teams for you guys. Which one are you most excited to play? Um, I'm excited for the season. I, I honestly don't know the schedule too well, um, so I'm just going to take each game as it comes. Um, and, and, you know, it's my last year, so I just want to you know, give everything I have. And what goals do you have for you as an individual this year? Uh, individually, I want to be the best leader I can be. I think a lot of things can happen. You know, people can get taken off the court and stuff like that. So, 
if I, if I worry about you know being a big big leader and a big energy giver to my team, I think everything will take care of itself. All right. Thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you. All right. Now we're here with Rich Rolf. Rich, go ahead and what were your final thoughts about the whole season last year? Um, my final thoughts were like we accomplished all our goals. Um, attack every opportunity with purpose was like our main goal, and I thought we did that um, throughout the season. All right, you, you averaged a double-double on the team last year with almost four, 15 points and 10 rebounds. Especially in the playoffs, you started getting a lot more rebounds than you did scoring-wise. So what did that transition from the regular season to the postseason? Um, I just did what my team needed, and um, other players were just scoring more, and they had better looks. So I was just trying to help my team, and that's what they needed. All right, now your thoughts. You guys are... Two wins away from the state championship. What what is going through your mind in that mentor game before the game starts? Um, obviously, I was excited, um, like, but I was just doing what got us to that point, and um, I feel like my team was just looking at that moment. Um, we were staying in the present and not looking forward. All right, you guys win the mentor game. How how tough is it to? come back the next day in the same arena and play another team to win the state championship in less than 12 hours? Um, obviously, it's hard on the body, but um, I thought we were prepared um, as much as we could be. Um, all the work we do um, got us to this point, so it was just another game. All right, now looking at this year's schedule, is there any game that stands out to you? Um, not spe specifically. I'm looking forward to the season. Um, yeah, just looking forward to the season. All right. And then what are some goals for you individually going into this season? Just um, our goal is like we will not see, see comfort. So that's every day in practice and games, just not seeking comfort. All right. And then finally, you guys have a target on your back. Teams are going to want to beat the defending state champs. Some teams come in a little bit more chippy than that. How do you guys prepare for that if they get a little bit more physical? Um, I feel like we're just as tough as, tough as them. Um, we may not be as chippy, as you say, but our mental toughness, not responding to them, just focusing on ourselves and the team will get us past anyone. All right, thank you, and good luck this year. Thank you. All right, now we're going to talk with Kyle Kenny. Kyle, how we started everybody else defending state one champs. What does that mean? Uh, I feel like it means a lot to all of us, but like it's not, it wasn't our goal. So, we, like, we attacked all, every opportunity with a purpose last year. Like, this year is, like, we will not seek comfort. So, going day in and day out to not seek comfort and just attacking everything. All right, now dive right into the playoff run. You you come in in the mentor game late in the third, beginning of the fourth quarter, and you hit four huge free throws. Coming off the bench like that, what are you prepared for that coming off the bench? Yeah, uh, just like a lot of work and practices and every day in the morning before school, just uh, getting getting shots up, getting free throws, you know, just preparing for that moment. You know, I think it, we all expected it at some point, like somebody was going to get in foul trouble or get hurt. So um, we just expected that somebody was going to have to step up, and it was me that day. Okay, and then on the way on the bus back to UD Arena the next day to play Westerville, what's going through your mind? Uh, that... This is uh this is the last day with like the seniors. We talked about it all year that we like counted down the days and we just wanted to maximize each day that we had with the team. So just to keep fighting and like uh, get to that last day. So just for those seniors, we just wanted to uh, have that last moment with them. All right, and then you see the ball fall out of the rim for Westerville and you guys win the state. What is that? What's going through your mind? Uh, I was just super excited. I told Max Knauer that I was going to go hug him first, and I went and found him. Uh, just, just like it was a great feeling for all of us, and uh, it was, like, wowed me. I cried, and uh, it felt great for those uh, seniors. Now coming in to this season, what is your 
guys' mindset coming in? I mean, how hard is it to push last season out of the way? Um, I don't think it, uh, we already talked about it. Like, last year's over. It doesn't matter at this point. It's just a new season. Uh, it's time to, like, get back to work and uh, not think about, like, what happened last year. It's a new new uh, season. Uh, just keep pushing this year. And finally, what are goals for you as an individual this year? Uh, I, I, just like not to seek comfort, I think it's the same as the team goal. Uh, we're all the same, just uh, not to seek comfort day in, day out, uh, do my work, uh, communicate, and uh, just be a better leader this year. And actually, I just thought of this. this you guys are going to have your first home game since early 2020 where they're going to be able to pack the stands. Was playing without a full crowd last year harder or easier? Um, I think you could argue both. Like it was easier because you didn't have to deal with the, like you could hear everybody. Uh, but it was also a lot harder that, uh, you know, we didn't have as many people behind us in the stands. So I, I think it, it will be better for us this year. All right, thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you. All right, now we're going to sit and talk with head coach Brooke Cups. Coach, I haven't got really a straight answer out of the kids. They always, the last few they said, they just pushed it back last year's over. But, I mean, you guys, first state championship in school history. I mean, there's got to be some emotion behind that. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I mean, I think the goal is to leave it behind and, uh, you know, appreciate, obviously, and, you know, we celebrated and we are grateful for the, the guys that we had together last year. It's just a completely different team now. Uh, we return a lot of guys, but just the dynamics are different. The, you know, graduating the seniors that we graduated um, had such a big impact on our culture and kind of how our group um, interacted. I think our, I mean, our focus is, you know, just like last year, our focus was never to win the state championship. It was to attack opportunities with purpose and to, to just try to become the best team that we can be at the end of the year. And I think this group is, we're on that same mission. Like we're trying to become the best team that we can become. Um, this group's goal is to, to not seek comfort. So they're trying to push themselves outside their comfort zone, continue challenging themselves, continue to improve, um, you know, and. And we just see where that takes us. I think I think that's part of it. I think you have to surrender that that goal that you're trying that you that you think about all the time, and just focus on the daily habits and the daily process. And I think we got to trust that that's going to lead us to to uh, you know as good as we can be wherever that is. All right. Now, last year during the regular season, you guys' offense was on fire, averaging 72 points a game almost. And then you get into the playoffs and you kind of shift you go you don't give up more than 50 or you don't even give up 50 points 48 was the most so how does a dynamic offense like that I mean you guys I didn't realize when I was looking at the stats you guys only gave up 60 points on defense at a six games out of 29 last year so I mean how does how do you clamp down that much on defense in the playoffs yeah you know I, I mean our, our focus is always defensive I, I think you've got to you got to not lose before you can win. And I think the way you don't lose is you take care of things at the defensive end. I think those are things that we can control night in and night out. You know, you're going to shoot it well sometimes, sometimes you're not, but you can always guard. And I think you know, our group last year really embraced that mentality. Um, you know, and we, we did score it a lot more, but there were a lot more possessions in those games. I think the, I think the points per possession is a, probably a better indicator of, of how efficient and stuff we were than probably points per game. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer. Like, if you live in Southwest Ohio and you're playing basketball down here in Division One, you better be able to win in the 40s sometimes because you got to go through the GCL, mm -hmm. and like, you have to be able to adjust to that style of play. And you know, that was I thought a big credit to the group that we had last year. They could, we could play in the 80s and 90s, and we could play in the 40s, and I and and they were just as comfortable in both situations. So, I think. Um, you know, I think that's that's just a credit to to the guys and their willingness to really. I didn't really care what the game ended up looking like. They just, it was just how can we win? What do we need to do to win? Uh, so, I mean, I think I think that's really kind of kind of what made those differences in points per points and points in each game. Now we start the playoff run. You guys played the most games eight to get to state. I mean, drawing a team like that, you were the number one seed. Does drawing really come into that big of a play? Um, 
I think it matters a little bit in the sectional and it allows you to have a little bit of choice in where you go in the districts. But I mean, I think you know you got you still got to play the games. Right. Um, you know, we we have typically chosen if we have a choice to play instead of to take a bye, mm -hmm. and that's really kind of the difference between seven games or eight games in the tournament. Um, you know, having a higher seed, yeah, you know, I think I think maybe it, it gives you a, a favorable draw early in your sectional. But I mean, I think once you get to the district, it's just, I mean, it's just a free for all. And it, if, you, if you're lucky enough to advance to the regional, I, I mean, I really believe like this year in our regional, I think any of, the, any of those four teams could have won the state. Like right. I, I just, I mean, I feel, and I feel like that every year. It's, you know, we're down seven to Elder in the regional semifinals. Moeller obviously was a really tight game. And mm -hmm. it's just, you know, I, just, I feel like our region is really tough. You know, we were in there with Elder, Moeller, St. X, three GCL schools that are really good. I, I just think, I think all of them, they're just as good as us. When things went our way, we, we made shots at the right time, got stops when we needed to. I really think that was the difference this year. All right, now you, you brought up Elder first. That was, that was one of your biggest games, I think. I mean, that was the one where you played, not necessarily behind a lot, but you were playing catch up from the beginning of that. And Tom went down in the first quarter with an injury. Yep. What is going through your mind when you saw him lying on the court? I mean, yeah, he he led the G walk in three point shooting, but I mean, he was a team captain and a leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, I always think you can make up for the scoring part of it. Where, where I think, you know, you miss somebody like Tom is, is like the energy the experience, the, the kind of the attitude, and the like, the confidence that Tom brings. Um, you know, so that was that was the most concerning part, and obviously, like just him being okay. I mean, I think I mean you're always guys are grabbing knees and stuff like that. I mean, that, those are scary injuries, and so I mean, that, my first concern was just like oh, let's, just, let's just hope he's okay, and make sure he's all right. Um, you know, so. The other game, I, I didn't feel like we played very well in that game. I thought we kind of struggled and, and it was kind of clunky in the first half offensively. We weren't really, didn't have much consistent flow to that game. And then defensively, you know, it, it was it was kind of just a just to kind of knock them out GCL game. And um, you know, we ended up kind of turning them over. I thought I thought our defense kind of flipped that game. We got a 10 second count and we got a couple turns out front that led to some easy baskets and it kind of flipped the momentum of that game. And then once we kind of got our feet under us, I felt like that was one of the few games that we played last year that we kind of looked like we were playing not to lose. Like I, I didn't think we had kind of that edge early in the game. We got it and that's kind of why I thought we kind of went on that run to, to kind of finish it off. And then you guys played Moeller the next game. Moeller is always a strong top of the or cream of the crop team. And you, you guys lost to him earlier in the year. Was was a revenge factor in that game or does, do you not count regular season opponents or matchups and you just focusing on that one game? Yeah, I don't know about revenge. I mean, we're very familiar with Moeller. I mean, they beat us, I think. They had beaten us three of the last four years or two of the last three years in the regionals. And, um, you know, we knew they were really good. They're extremely well coached. Their kids play the right way. I mean, it's just they're, they're good. And there's like there's no there's not really any way around it. I, I don't think in games like that, I don't think revenge matters. Like they're too good for that because like, you're you're not going to get them on an off night. Like they're going to play like they're they're very well coached. I think they'd won the last three state titles or two state titles. And so. You're not dealing with just some random team. Right. Um, you gotta you gotta go find a way to beat them. And I think uh, you know I, I think one of the things this year is like or last year's group like we had guys that thought we we could win. Like we thought, and I, I don't know that that's I think we always kind of think we we could win. But like we had some guys like you know I think of like our Tom shot obviously and Gabe hit a shot like the possession before that and. Mm -hmm. and, and, and went up and got a rebound. It was just kind of like our guys kind of had a little bit of mojo, a little bit of edge to them that, that we haven't always had when we play them or we thought like we thought we were the better team. And I think when you're playing, you know, elite teams like that, you have to have that edge and that mentality to give yourself a shot. And so, you know, that's a in that game a call, a bounce, a re, you know, anything changes the outcome of that game. That's right. how close it is. But uh, they're a great team, so our, I was I was proud of just how our guys competed in that one. 
And that, that was another, like you said, uh, knock them out, take body blow shots, 40 to 38. Yeah. But when Tom gets that shot, I was in the gym. From my vantage point, it looked like he was almost 12 feet behind the three-point line. <laughs> He, he said he, he didn't care where he was shooting it from. When he got the ball, he knew he was going to shoot it and it was going to go in. On the coaching side, if, if you see somebody square up behind that, that far behind the three-point line, does it enter your mind like, is that a little bit too far back? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it was deep. I don't think it was 12 feet, but it was, it was pretty deep. Um, you know, for Tom, I mean, I, I think that probably depends on who the player shooting it is. For Tom... No, as long as Tom is moving towards the basket and is in rhythm when he's shooting it, I'm pretty good. Like, I feel like he's making it most of the time. And I thought he caught that one ready to shoot it and knowing that he was going to shoot it um, in rhythm. And so, like, depth and that kind of stuff, I, I don't think that's, that's that big of a deal for Tom. All right. And then Tom brought up that... Getting back real quick, I think there was like three seconds left, and Gabe came up and fouled real quick because he knew you had a foul to give. Mm -hmm. That timeout before Tom shot, are you are you telling him that there's a foul to give, or are you telling him to just get back on defense? Or yeah, I mean, we just talked about we we talked about just coming down and running motion offensively and getting the best shot that we could. We didn't talk really anything about the defensive side of things. That was just, I mean, that was just a really smart play by Gabe and a reaction. Like, we, we hadn't talked about how many, how many, I mean, we, we told him, I think we probably told him the foul count when we left the huddle. Like, you know, they got six or whatever, so we knew we'd be in the bonus. But, um, but no, that was really just a, like a decision by Gabe at the time to, to kind of slow the ball down and stop the transition. It was a smart play. All right. You guys beat Moeller. You're two wins away from, two wins away from state. Does beating Moeller, does it feel like you, it, it gets a little bit easier after you beat a team that's three-time defending state champ? Uh, no, no. You're, I mean, you're playing in state semifinals in a, against the number one team in the state that hadn't lost all year. So, I mean, if, if it felt easier at the time, you got a pretty clear wake-up call when you saw your matchup for the, you know, for the state semifinals. So, um, I think... Uh, I think our mentality was we, we still had to just be at our best when we get, went there. Um, Mentor's a great team. They've got, they had great players. They had pretty much just rolled some people throughout the tournament and stuff. So, um, you know, we knew they were extremely explosive offensively. So that was, I mean, that was the biggest thing is like, they were, we knew they'd be different, a lot different than Moeller. But, you know, and Coach Krasanzik, I have a ton of respect for. Like, I think he's one of the best coaches in the country. And, uh, you know, so you know his guys are going to be ready to play. They're going to have a good plan. They're going to, you know, they're going to, like, mentors a team and they never back down from situations. Like, they're coming after you. So uh, we knew it was going to be a fight. We scrimmage them every year, actually. So we were pretty familiar so you with knew mentor. kind of going in yeah. what to expect. That's, that's good. But going into the game, in rhythm, into the state semifinal game, did you expect that your team was going to take 28 foul shots? Uh, no, no. I mean, we, it's, uh, it's not something we, we talk about getting to the line and getting easy points because I think that's a high efficient, uh, highly efficient way to score. Uh, but I thought our guys, a lot of those two came late in the game when they were fouling and stuff. Uh, but I, I did think, I thought we took really good shots in that game and we, we did a good job of like attacking the rim or, or making them come out and guard us and foul late in the game. So, um, you know, we just talk, really talk about shot quality. 28 free throws is a lot in yeah. that situation. So, And then Gabe gets into foul trouble late in the third, early in the fourth. And, he said that it was just dumb mistakes on his part, but I mean. I would agree. <laughs> but Kyle came in and stepped up huge, and he hit four free throws in the fourth quarter that were huge at the point because it was still within reach for Mentor. Yeah. Yeah, no, like Gabe's fouls were stupid. Like the one, the last one, his fourth one he got was really dumb trying to run under a kid with three fouls. Um, but we I mean, we have a ton of confidence in Kyle. Like Kyle, mm -hmm. I mean, he, we we watch him every day in practice. He hadn't been in those situations, but like you know, we we had no question he would be fine with what he was doing, what we were asking him to do. He, you know, last year I thought Kyle's main focus was defensively to really guard people, 
but we knew he's a capable offensive guy. He hadn't he hadn't really played that well offensively and made shots like like he's capable of making. But um, but his mentality, I mean, he's a tough, competitive kid. So um, you know, we uh, we were we were good. Like I, I didn't I wasn't I wasn't all that worried about it. And when he got fouled, he's a great free throw shooter. Uh, so you know, I thought he did a great job stepping up in that situation. So you guys win that one. I asked the kids, how hard is it to come back and play a back-to-back -back day? Not really a lot of time to film study and all that to play for the state championship. But what, what do you, what did you have to do as a coach? I mean, that was it was a late night game. It was like a seven thirty, eight o'clock tip for your game, and then to come back. And how do you get ready for the state championship? Yeah, I mean. Right, you can look at it like, like make game, excuses about it, but they're in the same situation. You know, Westerville Central was in the same situation we were, so we were just, you know, at that point in the year, you're just who you are. Like, you're, you're not changing a whole lot. Like, you know, so we came back, we actually watched the, we watched their game, the St. Ignatius Westerville Central game um, here. Uh, so we could get back, you know, get to bed and didn't have to drive home. So we left the arena, came back here, watched the game together. Um, and then, you know, coaches stayed up and watched some some of the other films that we had collected on on them. Um, and just, you know, I, th I think the mentality is like, we're just going to go do us. You're going to make some tweaks. You're going to you're going to adjust a little bit to some things that they do. Uh, but I mean, that, that was kind of our mentality throughout the whole year. That, that's just kind of like that's how we prepare. Like we're going to. We're gonna do us, and then we'll make some tweaks to what we need to do to try to take some things away from you or attack you. But uh, it's really our focus all year is really on us just being the best version of us, and you know trying to trying to make other people deal with us rather than the other way around. Right. Uh, so uh, it was good though. It was good. I mean, they're they're really really good, and they, and they're tough, hard nosed, very GCL like mm -hmm. team with really good athletes and really good players and really well coached. It was, it was a great game. Now, bus ride to UD Arena for the state championship. Is there any jitters going on? What's going through your mind? Gosh, I, it's been a while ago. I mean, I think it was, I mean, I felt like with this group uh, or with the group last year, they were very, I would say loose, like they, they just kind of, I don't think they felt that pressure. They just, I mean, they knew, obviously you know it's a huge game and right. that you're, you know, so you you're competing for the first state championship in school history. Guys, like you, that, that doesn't, you, you're aware of that. But for our guys, it was, they just wanted to play. I mean, we, were, we had played really, really well. You know, we had kind of, kind of been on this role. It almost felt like we couldn't lose like we were just we were just playing doing our stuff and you know guys were we were really connected I thought guys were so so committed to their roles by that point um, you know I, I just felt like we were at our best like we were we were as good as we could be so let's just go play and see what happens that's kind of where we were all right and then going into the final possessions of the game I mean it was the one point game at the end but you guys are in that situation. They have the ball underneath their own basket, with a chance to shot to win the state. Yeah. What what's going through that huddle before that final shot? Uh, so we had a couple, we had fouls to give again. So we fouled a little bit, kind of like the end of the Moeller game, um, to try to eat a little clock up, make it a tougher shot for them. Um, and then, you know, we came to the timeout, and we, what we said was attack the opportunity. It's an opportunity. We need we need one stop. That's it. So, I mean, it was a pretty cool, it was a pretty cool, that I do remember pretty clearly, like that huddle that we're standing in because, you know, we didn't talk about a bunch of other stuff. We didn't even talk X's and O's. We went back, I mean, we went back to the thing that we decided was our goal as a team in October. So it was cool that that came full circle and like that was the last thing we talked about in the huddle. So, All right, then they inbound it. They missed the shot. When you see the ball fall off the rim, what what's going through your mind that you guys you guys just won the first state championship in school history? You guys completed your task set in October. Yeah, it was just. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it was just really cool to see the kids celebrate that. 
and you know like the I think the thing when you have a team like we had last year is like so many kids make so many sacrifices and I think seeing you know a lot of times those sacrifices don't pay off the way you want them to pay off right so you're you know you're asking a senior we had seniors that we asked to like hey be part of the team but you're not gonna get to play right right and that's hard. That's a hard thing to accept and to embrace. Or we got guys that were like, hey, we don't want you shooting threes. We just want you to rebound and screen. And, you know, for that, for them to listen to that, first of all, because a lot of kids wouldn't want to do that and would, would want it to be more about them. But to have so many guys that bought into those roles and then for it to pay off for the team the way it paid off, I mean, it was just, it was cool, and it was hopefully something that those guys will remember forever. And, you know, not only remember the experience of winning it, but the process that it took to win it and the sacrifices that they made to be part of something like that special. And then I saw on Twitter when I finally woke up after getting home from the field and everything, Gabe and Tom are in here at 6 o'clock in the morning the day after winning. <laughs> Uh, so and they said it wasn't, it was, it was just them two that brought it on themselves to come in. I mean, what kind of maturity does that take from two of your leaders that they just won the state championship and they're, not, they're in the gym preparing not even seven hours after? Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, I think, it, I think it's uh, like, I think it shows that they they understand why they were where they were so they like they just like their home base is work right when things are good you work when things are bad you work when you lose in the sectional you work when you win the state you work and so uh, for me it's just uh, hopefully a reflection of the, like our program and the culture and the the mentality that we want our guys to embrace and we ask of them like we ask a lot of our guys like we we expect a lot and I know a lot of programs do um, but you know our guys at this point are pretty committed to that and so uh, you know I thought it I thought it was really cool I, I think you know it's like they probably didn't get any better during that you know they were exhausted and they were tired but the cool part is, like, that's what they wanted to do. Like, that's the cool part. All right, now coming into this year, I asked the players, do, do you feel like you have a target on your back as defending champs? Um, I mean, I'm sure we do. I, I, I mean, I know, like, in years past when we were playing somebody, uh, I mean, you'd be like, they won the state last year. Like, I mean, you, you're obviously aware of it. Um, you know the the thing we talk to our guys about, and we're gonna you know address as we get into the season is like, like there's nothing. So what? Like it's 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 like so what? Okay, so what? You're gonna get everybody's best. Like yeah, we we want to get everybody's best. Like that that's that's what that's what we prepare for. We don't prepare to play Wayne when they're not playing well. Like you know you're planning to play them on their best, like at their best. And so that part of it is all all so much out of your control. And so. Like our focus is just let's let's uh, do not seek comfort, right? Let's not seek comfort. Let's get as good as we can get. Let's work at work at it every day. Uh, and when we get a chance to go compete, let's go compete our ass off, and let's just see where we are. Um, buy into our roles, sell out for the team, play for each other, all the stuff that we talk about within our program, and then like target, no target. Like it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like that's. You know, it's one of the things we said at the end of last year was like, who cares? Like, they, 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 and that's how I feel about the whole target on your back and people. Who cares? Like, mm -hmm. we're just we're gonna go do our stuff. This is gonna be the first time since late in the 2020 season, or the, from the 2019 season, that you guys are gonna be able to play in front of a what should be a packed crowd. Last year was it easier or tougher to play and coach with the limited fans? Yeah, I, I think our first game's against Springfield on December 3rd. Okay, then Mentors that, a scrimmage. Okay, yeah. then I yeah. wrote it down. No, because it, it, it is on that Thanksgiving weekend, which you can play, but we always do it as a scrimmage, that okay. last one. But, um, yeah, it was it was weird playing last year without fans. Mm. It was it was weird. And I thought, um, 
It's one of the things I was I was really proud of our guys, especially the second half of the year. We got we got to playing where we were bringing our own energy. You know, it's because it's an easy thing to just to treat it as an excuse or look at it as a crutch. Well, yeah, it was a dead. It was dead. We didn't have any fans. It's not like. That's something we don't control either. We control how we play, how we mentally prepare for the game, how we're going to uh, you know, attack the opportunity that we have. And so I thought our group last year really did a good job of that. Um, you know, I know they're really looking forward to having fans back in the gym. Um, I don't really care. Like I like practice better than the games anyway. So uh, it's, it'll be good though, I think. I think it'll be, it'll be fun. You know, we had some we had some really you know, great games last year that I wish fans would have been able to see. So hopefully we'll we'll be in those opportunities in those situations again this year. Right. And looking at schedule, first there's like there's two different spurts in the schedule. It's where like you play five games in like nine days, and then coming back after starting with your flying to the hoop game, you guys play like I think eight and sixteen or seventeen days like that. Yeah. What, I mean, how do you prepare? I mean, is it hard to kind of game plan and get film when you got so many games in succession like that? It is, it is. But again, I think it goes to how we, how we go about that preparation. It's always about us. So, you know, we are really, like, as soon as we set teams, we'll start preparing for things that we'll see. And then it's just a matter of tweaking this or that. Like. Our focus is going to be on us, especially. I mean, we we don't really even talk about any opponents until we get to probably January. Like then we'll start like specifically game planning for specific teams. But until then, it's almost it's almost 100% us and us trying to um, you know be as good as we can be at what we want to do. Um, but you know, last year. Last year we had a we had clumps of games that were crazy because yeah, everything was backed up for COVID. So I don't think I don't think it'll be anything anything like what we dealt with last year. But um, you know, especially when you get like you're like talking about around Martin Luther King Day and playing to the hoop stuff. By that time in the season, playing games like guys are looking forward to playing games. Okay. So it'll be good. And then looking at schedule, you guys. There's quite a few games that a lot of people around the area might not know. Like you got Vertical Academy out of New York, yeah. Blue Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge out of Virginia, out of Virginia, and yeah. then you guys finished the season at home against Huntington Prep out of West Virginia. Yeah. I mean, scheduling those games. I mean, those are all going to be tough, tough games for the kids, and ex especially the Huntington game, learning for, to go into the postseason. But I mean. When you sat back to make the schedule, I mean, did you plan on some of those teams being open at the time? Um, yeah, we, I mean, so two years ago, I couldn't get any of these teams to play us, you know, and now, like, our program is to a place to where those teams want to play us, mm -hmm. and our mentality has always been, we will play the best teams that we can play. Like that, just it, like, it doesn't matter where we need to go to play them, where they want to play. Like, if you want us to, I mean, if my AD didn't care, we'd play, we'd play all, all of them on the road if we had to. But we want to, like our mentality is we want to play the best teams that we can play for 22 games. Like as good a team, competition as we can play. Um, I think our guys embrace that mentality. So, um, you know, we're just excited about it. Like, we, we want to, like, just let's, play. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We, like, I look at that stuff as, like, every one of those is a test to give us feedback on, um, on how we can get better. And so, you know, the better competition you play, the better feedback you get. And so that, that gives you more things to work on, more ideas of, you know, what level you have to go, go to to execute things and, you know, minimizing mistakes and, I just, I, I think it's all like, I don't care what our record is when we go into the play. I, I don't, it doesn't, makes no difference to me. Right. What, I mean, we're going to try to win every game, of course, but it, that, that is secondary to us not being comfortable and just continuing to grow and get better. And wherever we are when we get there, we'll, we'll just see what happens. Now, mo a handful of those games are here at home. Do you think that that might add a little bit more to your side? Home crowd don't have to like travel to Huntington or anywhere or play at a neutral site or like that. So, I mean, does the, how do you gotta talk your team down of the, the lights and noise from the teams that are the names of the teams you're playing? Yeah, we don't care. We just, we just don't talk about them. Like we, we don't, we don't care if we're playing Vertical Academy um, or playing Huntington Prep or if we're playing, you know, 
one of our teams in the league or like it's an opportunity to play let's go play we don't it doesn't matter Let, let's just get it it's I think that is the that's the mindset you have to have and you know we're not perfect at it but our guys have embraced that pretty well the last few years and I think uh, I, I think if they're throwing it up we're gonna go play so it doesn't matter where or who Right, Gabe said he, he didn't care if he played on the court out in the parking lot. He yeah. just wants to play. Right, right, and that's you know, that's what you get with guys that you know, guys that work like our guys work. Like they just, it's important to them. So they they just want to compete. And then finally, I asked the kids if they had goals, and none of them really set out as an individual goal. They are all for the team and they're all, all just worried about the team and all that but I mean do you give pressure or not 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 pressure but goals to like the starting three your three captains or all that before the season started and what to expect from them no we, we just I mean it's strictly like our only goals are our team goals and if you help your team fulfill their goals then maybe you'll get some individual recognition for that and if you don't you don't like that but the the goal is for our team to be as good as our team can be so what we will do rather than goals is we get we do talk specifically about roles and like what do you need to contribute to the team that is going to give us the chance to be as good as we can possibly be and that doesn't like that might be that might be scoring that might be not shooting threes that might be bringing an edge to every game you know it might be communicating consistently like you know we'll talk about what those roles are um but i don't know that those are goals they're more like you know standards that we expect you to fulfill in order for us to be our best but our goal only goal we set is we will not seek comfort that's our goal all right so that that the kids said that a lot is that the new new slogan for this year i mean last year it, it's always been Chop, chop, and you guys chopped down the tree last year winning state. I mean, is the seek no comfort your new goal, or are you still? Yeah, so, so chop, chop is more of our mentality. That's like, that's Gabe and Tom coming back in at 6 o'clock the day after the state championship game. That, that's just, that's how we go about things. Um, our goal, like last year, our goal was to attack opportunities with purpose. So we, we set our goals as process-based goals. So. You know, like I said, we talked about that in the last huddle in the state championship game. Um, but that was, we also talked about it in our fifth practice of the year, getting ready to do the next drill, right? It's an opportunity to attack it, attack it, attack it. So that was our goal. We just wanted to try to attack as many of our opportunities as we had with purpose, right? Not just taking it for granted, not just so, so like, you know, like, does it matter who we're playing? No, it's, it's an opportunity, right? So that was our goal last year. Well, this is a new group, a new team, so we need to set a new goal. So this year's, this year's goal for this team is we will not seek comfort. So now it's more about, like, what is comfortable and what's not comfortable, and we want to go after what's not comfortable. So that means, you know, I, I think, you know, we, we've got to talk a little bit more about it because uh, we just, you know, we just said it last week at our retreat, but, you know, it's, it's more about like you know communicating when you're out of a drill, communicating when when somebody doesn't do something that that you know doesn't hold our standard, confronting that and talking to them about it, right? Um, getting out of your comfort zone and making you know supporting other guys that maybe aren't in your group, aren't maybe aren't on our team, um, you know, choosing to do extra work and watching extra film and you know caring, taking the time to care about your teammates, like all that stuff is out of the normal comfort zone. So we're we're talking about those things and like that's our goal this year as much as we can we want to not seek comfort we want to make sure we're pushing and challenging ourselves as an individual and as a team to continue growing all right well good luck this year coach appreciate it thank you for doing this no problem thank you